Hi, welcome to episode number two, Find the Heartbeat of the Community. I'm Matt Schwarzman, Director of the Cultural Activism in the Classroom Program at College Unbound. The purpose of the journal is twofold. First, to explore the process of cultural activism. And second, to support young people in taking control of their own education, both inside and outside the classroom, through cultural activism. As you may remember from episode one, uh, this is the book we're using as a common point of reference for most episodes. The book takes the reader on a journey to visit 10 cultural activists working in communities across the country. Each artist leaves us with a tip to help us understand their specific approach. Together, they represent the five territories or aspects of the cultural activism process. Contact, research, action, feedback, and teaching. This episode, we're going to focus on the story of Chris Edaaki of Zuni Pueblo. I get to talk to New Orleans cultural activist Ron Bechet, a close friend and a member of the program faculty. As you watch the video, think about where you live. Who are the heartbeats in your community? And let us know afterwards by commenting on our YouTube page. Hey, Ron. Hi, Matt. How are you? How are you? Good morning. Good morning to you. Um, can you uh, just tell us a little bit about your work and, um, and uh, how, you, how you do it? Okay. Um, well, first of all, I, uh, I make things. I am a, a visual maker, I'm, uh, or an artist, and I actually um, uh, hope to use some of that, that skill that I've developed in, in making things to um, assist uh, community and can assist people in developing their own skills in how do you build communities mm -hmm. and how do you make communities relevant for who you are. Uh, because for me, uh, my making, my, my visual art making has been instrumental in uh, keeping me in touch with me, uh, with myself and keeping me um, in an understanding of what it is to be a human being. Good. Thanks. Thank you. So uh, you and I are both very familiar with the uh, Zuni Pueblo story. You, you helped me uh, write it. Um, how was uh, growing up in New Orleans in some ways maybe similar to uh, Zuni growing for Chris Adaki growing up in, in Zuni Pueblo? Different, obviously, in many ways, but were there ways in which you can really see some, some parallels? Uh, family was extremely important. Community, um, um, I would say, too, that um, culture um, was a very important factor in, in my growing up. Um, music and, uh, and ways of doing things. Um, was a, a very important part of, of my experience in growing up. Mm -hmm. Can you think of something in particular, some cultural form or some cultural value that you that you was passed on to you by by a particular elder in the same way, kind of that Chris uh, Edaaki talks in Zuni Pueblo about uh, learning from his grandparents. Well, oddly enough, my grandfather, um, and my maternal grandfather, was. A, was someone that I really respected and grew very close to. Um, and uh, one of the things that he loved, um, I, I grew to love as well, which was um, on what we have as Mardi Gras Day here in New Orleans. Um, there's a unique culture in the black community uh, called the Black Indian culture or Mardi Gras Indian culture. And um, those men uh, and women and families come together to make unique uh, culture that has to do with um, uh, respecting um, the Native American culture that they knew by uh, by masking, as they say, as as uh, Indians. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so he worked all day, and um, and then when he came home, and when he was with his family, he had a good time and uh, and enjoyed his family, which which is also part of the culturation that we, we went through. Of course, we didn't want to get up early on a, on a holiday uh, when we didn't have to go to school, 
but you know his excitement um, about trying to find um, these guys masking Indian on Mardi Gras Day was was something that was really significant um, at the time. But you know, accepted for him as he grew up, and so he was passing that at uh, the beauty of that that particular culture on to us mm-hmm. uh, in a very beautiful way. You know, because uh, it was getting up early, it was making sandwiches and. And, you know, getting drinks together in aluminum foil in the freezer and, and packing up those things and, and just going out running the streets. They were not themselves. They were uh, in these feathers and, and beads and, uh, and they, they spoke a language we didn't understand and uh, to each other. And um, that obviously was made up. But we didn't know that, you know, and uh, it became their own language. And they sang and they, they performed and danced. And, you know, they really didn't look at you. You know, they were doing their own thing. And so they became very mysterious and very um, exciting to, to, to see. There are people, places, and things in the community that are kind of functioning that kind of symbolic way as a kind of heartbeat, mm-hmm. something you think about. When you think about people, uh, who are the heartbeats of the, the community? Who is somebody that you think of very quickly? Mm-hmm. Well, I think of Carol B. Bell um, as a heartbeat of, of uh, the community. Mm-hmm. Um, Tell us about her. You know, quickly, Carol B. Bell is the founder of the Ashe Cultural Arts Center uh, uh, in um, uptown New Orleans in Central City. And um, she is... Uh, been the director for 20 years of that organization. Uh, this, they have the 20th anniversary this year. And um, started from basically nothing and uh, built an, org- uh, an organization that has become more than just an organization, but, but sort of a, a cultural beacon, um, I would say, for the black community. And so, sorry. So if, so if you want to find out something, you're involved in a project where you want to find out the history of New Orleans or I mean, what, what are some of the topics that if you had, if you were working on a project, you uh-huh. would want to talk to Carol as kind of someone to, to touch base with as you're developing your concept or your, your process for the project. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that would be a great resource um, if you can you know, stand in line for a while. You know, <laughs> that's um, true, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think a lot of people recognize her as as a as a cultural leader. Um, thinking about our audience and thinking about you know how can we kind of go from now we understand this concept of cultural asset and being our people mm-hmm. to kind of how how does that uh, oper- how we operationalize mm-hmm. that idea? Mm-hmm. So let's say you're uh, you're going to work on a project about kind of uh, violence in the community. Mm-hmm. and the roots of it and um, where it lives and, and what can be done about it. Um, might you talk to Carol uh, or want to talk to Carol about it? And if you couldn't, you know, what would you do next? Well, there are so many resources around that particular topic. You know, of course you have to do your research. Um, you have to find um, the roots and you have to find the symptoms uh, and then in order to get to what the root is, you know, and, and sort through that. And um, before you went to Carol, that you would, um, you would have gotten um, a good base of, of what you are hoping to accomplish mm-hmm. uh, through your research, through understanding mm-hmm. what it is that you want to say, what is it that you want to do, mm-hmm. uh, would be, I think, an important part. Um, I think once you go to someone... Uh, a cultural leader like Carol, that you would be able to have her um, double check, uh, so to speak, what you what you hope to accomplish. I see. Okay. And she becomes a resource then for what other people have done in the past, um, so that you're not just you know uh, rehashing some of the. You may have not found that this has been addressed before in a mm-hmm. particular way, mm-hmm. using culture as a tool to uh, actually affect um, um, what you want to do. Mm-hmm. So um, then you find these kinds of resources that can actually, you know, double check or uh, uh, help you to understand what might be the nuances of what you're trying to accomplish mm-hmm. uh, through their experience. Yeah. So, um, so what, let's say, sorry. 
sort of what um, we, we have come to learn, you know, um, the idea of funk uh, in, in terms of what uh, we, we know that you find the funky people, you know, the people who have been around for a while to know about these experiences and to know about, you know, ways of doing things that you may have not come across. Yeah, I would think that you would um, definitely go and find um, those people that you want to serve and ask um, questions uh, to ask, I mean, what do you need um, to ask, you know, how can I be of service? These are my skills. And uh, how can these skills help you um, in what you're trying to accomplish? And so you, you, you begin to build a relationship based on the, uh, your understanding and checking your understanding uh, through the people that you're trying to serve. If not, you know, then it becomes something else, it becomes more missionary than, uh, than actually being of service or actually being able to build a relationship that can actually solve a problem. Um, so the first thing I think is, is understanding what it is that um, is needed. And, and, and that's not your assessment, but that's the assessment of other people mm -hmm. uh, based on your skills and based on what you have to offer, your assets, and how those assets match with those that are in, um, that you're trying to serve. Did you see that? That's Ron blowing my mind with just uh, his brilliance. And um, he got me thinking about my own theoretical framework. So that's pretty cool. So now we'd like to hear from you. Who are the heartbeats in your community? And uh, I want to put a special shout out to our founding uh, group of subscribers and, and ask you in particular to, to try to comment. Uh, Carlton, who, who are the heartbeats of the community in Raymond, Mississippi? Uh, and how do they factor into the work of the Mississippi Center for Cultural Production? Um, and your work in the museums in San Francisco, um, how do you incorporate the heartbeats of the community into your work there? Um, Andrea, uh, who are the heartbeats of Denver that Youth on Record incorporate into their work, and, and how is it done? Um, does this idea uh, even fit with your work? Maybe it doesn't, but I'm, I'm interested in, in using this to, uh, to spark what's hopefully a rich conversation. Um, thanks to Ron Bechet for his amazing insights. Thanks to Keith Knight for his amazing cartoons. The next course of uh, Cultural Activism in the Classroom Starts on October the 30th. Discounts are available. Um, so, yeah, great. Thank you. Bye.